everyone, it's me, Jessica, health fitness program manager from McLean. And I'm here today to guide you through a great 30 minute core and stretch class. I'm gonna give you about two minutes to take the time to set some space up for yourself and set yourself up for success. I recommend, you know, if you have a mat that you can actually work out on, awesome. If you also happen to have a medium, wait, what does medium mean to you? I don't know. So I'm going to have two weights nearby. I've got a five and an eight for some work that we're going to do with the weight behind our leg. If you don't have a weight that you can put behind your leg, maybe you have a water bottle or a small ball or a larger ball or just something else, that, even a towel, even a rolled up sock. You can place behind your leg and create a little extra squeeze just so you'll be contracting those muscles a little more as we get to some moves that we have on the floor. Today's core and stretch is going to be a little different than usual. We're not going to have any set ab work times. We're just going to work some core stuff into our stretches. We're going to start at the top of our mat in just a couple minutes. Make sure that your space smells nice, that you have some water. We don't have any specific water breaks. But remember, if things smell nice, you're going to want to take some nice deep breaths. And if you need to stop for a moment and grab a sip, you do what is right for your body today. Feel free to take as many breaks as you want to. This is your class. Okay, dokily. Looks like things are working out just fine. So we're going to start today at the top of our mats or at the front of whichever space that you're going to be using. Make sure that you do have some room to step your legs back behind you. Go ahead and relax your arms down by your side. Start to really ground your feet into the floor. Equally pressing through all four corners of the feet, the balls, and as well as in the heels. Make sure that you're not looking down towards the floor into the nothingness and lift that chin up nice and proud. Open your chest, draw your belly in, take any extra arching out of your back, squeeze your glutes, hips forward, fingertips stretch down to the floor as shoulders decompress. Find that one spot in front of you to focus your eyes and let's begin movement with three big breaths. So go ahead, bend your knees as much as you need to, weight in your heels. Inhale all the way up, stretch up, find length from your waist and exhale. Arms come down by your side. Two more, bend your knees. Inhale, feel that stretch in your belly, fingers rise up, exhale. Arms come down by your side. One more, just like that. And then exhale, relax your arms down by your side again. Take another moment here in mountain pose. Hopefully you're already just feeling a little bit more open. Make sure you're not shifting the weight forward into your toes. I know I was. And bring the weight back into your heels. We got a couple forward folds coming up. Okay. Inhale your arms up overhead. Pull that belly in nice and tight and rain die or swan your fingers down towards the floor. As you get there, take a deep inhale, come up into a half lift. Maybe hands come onto your shins or onto your thighs as you find a nice flat back and length through the crown of your head. And exhale, release yourself down to the floor. Let's hang out for a couple breaths, maybe even moving one knee and then the other, getting some movement in your hips. Just really warming up the body to begin with, being so proud of yourself. Whatever time of day it is that you came to class, whether you're stepping away from your desk for a nice midday lunch break or treating yourself to a morning practice, to some evening movement, it is medicine, so find what feels good. Let's keep going. Bring the weight back into your heels. Slowly roll yourself up one vertebrae at a time at the top. Inhale your arms up overhead. Same thing. Exhale. Swan dive down towards the floor. Inhale into your half lift. And exhale down into your forward fold. Take two breaths down here in this forward fold. Feeling that stretch in your hamstrings. Maybe you can even lift your hips a little bit higher the second time. On your next inhale, start to slowly roll yourself up. Bring those arms up overhead, belly in. Exhale. 
swan dive down towards the floor once more. Come into your half lift. Exhale down into your forward fold and place your hands down on the floor this time. We're going to step our right leg back into a lunge and we're going to be cool. We're going to bring that back knee down towards the floor as well. Untuck your toe. Just hang out here in a little bit of a hip opener. Maybe you even wiggle your foot out towards the side and bring your hands towards the inside of your leg. If it feels good, you can gently press a little in each direction or just hang out in that hip opener. All right, let's come on back to being lifted. So weight comes forward, tuck your back toe under, lift that knee up off of the floor. We're gonna step our right leg back up to meet our left. Exhale down into a forward fold. Inhale, slowly roll yourself up. Bring those arms up overhead. Palms come together this time and exhale, bring them down to heart center. Take a moment here and namaskar. Make sure you don't have an overarching in your back, so squeeze your glutes, hips forward, shoulders relaxed. Let's get the other side. Inhale, arms up overhead, belly in. Exhale, rain or swan dive down to the floor. Inhale, up into your half lift. Exhale, down into your forward fold. Go ahead, step your left leg back this time. Plant the ball of the feet on the floor and then go ahead, bend your knee, untuck your toes, just hang out here, maybe wiggle that foot out to the side just a little bit. If it feels good to gently rock a little side to side, it's a little preview maybe of some things that are gonna be coming up in just a minute. All right, get ready to stand back up. So tuck that back toe under, lift your knee up off of the floor, bring your left leg forward to meet with the right. Inhale into your half lift. Exhale down into your forward fold and then slowly roll yourself up all the way. Arms come up overhead, palms together. Exhale, hands come down to heart center. We're gonna change it up just a little bit this second time, adding in a twist. Inhale, arms up overhead. Exhale, swan dive down to the floor. Inhale into your half lift. Find that length, exhale, forward fold. Go ahead, step that right leg back again. If you want, you can keep your knee up off of the floor, this time challenging yourself even more. Keep your right hand down on the floor. Inhale that left arm all the way up towards the sky. Try not to turn your hips too much towards either side, so hips are still safe. Somewhat squared towards the mat. Big reach through the middle of the body. Exhale, bring your right hand down. We're just gonna step back into a plank. Hang out in your plank for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Keep your eyes forward. Three, two, chin neutral though. All right, go ahead, step your right foot forward. Keep your left hand down on the mat, inhale. Right arm up towards the ceiling. Big hip opener if you need to, you can still bring that back knee down towards the floor. Untuck your toe, find what feels right for your body today. On your next exhale, bring your hand down to the floor. Let's step back into that plank one more time. Open your feet wider if you need a little bit more balance. Make sure there's no wrinkles in your neck for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, send your hips up towards the ceiling. Down dog, bring your belly closer towards your thighs. Take a moment, pedal through your heels. Ah, oh, get that nice stretch through your calves. And then we're just gonna walk our feet up towards our hands. Take an inhale when you get there, find your half lift. Exhale once more down into your forward fold. And inhale, slowly, gently rise all the way up. Arms come back up overhead. Exhale, hands come down to heart center. Namaskar. Take a couple breaths here. All right, so that was a little bit of a warm-up. Now we're going to do a, a variety of moves on one side. And we're going to stand back up. We're going to do the same moves on the other side, so you'll know what's coming. Ah, oh, thank yourself for being here. Maybe set an intention for yourself, just for your movement, for your practice, for your mental health for today. 
maybe you have an intention that you've been working with, maybe you have no idea what I'm talking about. So if you have no idea what I'm talking about, I just want you to, to say out loud to yourself, I am amazing and I am enough. And know that whatever you bring to today's practice is enough. It's practice, it's not perfect. Just keep showing up and doing your best. All right, let's keep moving y'all. Ground through your feet, squeeze your glutes, hips forward, shoulders relaxed, belly pull in, inhale those arms up overhead. Exhale, rain or swan dive down to the floor. Inhale up into your half lift, find that length, feel it on the back of your legs. Exhale down into your forward fold. We're gonna step back into a lunge. Once again, let's start with that right foot, stepping back, plant it down on the floor. Ball of the foot comes down, heel stays lifted. Keep your hips squared forward as we inhale up into a crescent lunge. Can you bring those arms up overhead? We're just gonna hang out here in this crescent lunge for a couple of breaths. Keep a big bend in that front knee. Keep stretching through that back heel. Make sure you're not twisting your hips towards the side. They're gently tucked under. Maybe you even feel that delightful stretch in your belly. Find length from your waist, not just shoulders up towards your ears. One more inhale, lift up and exhale. Rain those fingers back down towards the floor. Bring your back knee down, untuck your toes and wiggle your foot just a little bit out to the side of the mat. Keeping your knee in line with your shoulder, maybe even pressing the inside of your knee against your shoulder, starting to stimulate those legs, muscles, that hip opener just a little bit enjoying this hip opener here. And if that's not enough, you can always hinge yourself forward a little bit more. Make sure that knee is not going past your toe. I like this tabletop hip opener. Feels good, unsupported. We're gonna walk our hands back now and turn it into a hamstring stretch. So start to flex the toes of your left foot towards your face and see how straight you can bring your hips back behind you. So try not to bring your glutes all the way over to your bent right knee. And just depending on how tight your body feels today will depend on how far forward you can fold. So maybe you have to lift yourself up even and you can't lift your toe off the floor. That's okay, maybe you can reach that toe off the floor. Maybe you can get your knee a little closer towards your nose. Take two more breaths. We're gonna walk it forward once more, one more opportunity to come into a deeper hip opener than we were in before since that back leg is back a little bit more. And then we're gonna turn it into pigeon. So take your left foot and walk it all the way over to your right hand. Maybe your heel even comes closer towards your hips. Get your shin as parallel to the mat as feels good for you today. You might walk it back with your back leg and sit yourself right here. Think about not bringing your left glute towards the floor, but having your right hip as close towards the floor as you can. And depending on how tight you feel, you might be really lifted. You might be nowhere near the floor. You might not even be able to get that knee down towards the floor. But if your hips are really open, it might feel good for you to relax yourself down. Be a little bit of a sleeping swan here. Isn't it great that we can go from being pigeons to swans? Take a couple more seconds in this breath. All right, if you came down onto your forearms, walk yourself back up. We're gonna take a bend of that back leg, make two legs like 90, 90 degrees. Hang out for a couple breaths in deer pose. Up to you how tight you bring that back foot in. Maybe it's all the way towards your glute makes a nice stretch into the quad. Maybe it's a little bit further out, a little bit more stretch to the backside of the leg. At least that's what I feel. Everyone's body is different, so find what feels right for you because we're gonna hang out and get a little bit of glute work while we're here in deer pose. I want you to turn towards your left leg and bring your hands down on the mat. Creates a great stretch through that lower back as well. Work on drawing your left Sorry, right shoulder forward. All right, from here, we're gonna pulse that back leg up. So, might need to lift yourself up a little bit more. Notice how you engage your core differently to balance on just this one leg. We're gonna inhale up, 
exhale down. Inhale up, exhale down for five, four, I'm nice, three, two, one. Awesome. Release it back down into deer pose once more. Ooh, ooh, cramping. Sit yourself up the best that you can. We're going to bring that back leg forward. Trace it like it's going through the sand. Cross both legs over and come into double pigeon or fire logs. If that was confusing, you have the outside of your right leg right by your left knee and as you sit that right glute down the legs start to stack you can wiggle your bottom leg forward do your best to stack those legs again depending on how tight your hips are your knee might be all the way to your chest and if you're feeling really open you can get these awesome fire logs gentle pressure might feel good maybe a little massage through your side hip find what works for you take a couple breaths more right here We're going to switch from here to come onto all fours into tabletop. So make your way into tabletop. Enjoy a couple cat cows, anything that feels right for you. Cat cow doesn't just have to be tucking your chin to your chest and coming into cat and then pulling your chest forward and coming into the cow. It can mean some big hip circles if you're still noticing a lot of tightness there. It can be some shoulder rolls. All right, so we're gonna keep working with the right leg that we had behind us. And now's the time to bring a weight a little bit closer. I'm gonna be kind to myself. I'm gonna use this five pounder because this is like my fourth workout of the day. Winkity wink. <laughs> okay, so before we even bring that weight into our hand, I want you to create as strong of a tabletop as you can. Make sure that your shoulders aren't sinking towards your ears, so press into your hands, palms. There's no more arching in your back, so a nice flat back. You might have to take a little tuck of your pelvis and draw that belly in. We're gonna lift that right leg up and make some circles. Four circles in whatever direction you want to, but don't let your hips open to the side as you make these circles. So as limited of a range of motion as you need to be in, so your hips are still squared to the mat, and once you finish your fourth circle, go ahead, change direction of those circles. Make sure you're still pressing into your hands, palms, not ooh, sinking into those shoulders. Awesome. Come back into your tabletop. And now let's go ahead and bring the weight behind our right leg. Remember, if you don't have a weight, you can place anything behind your right leg that you just give a gentle squeeze to so that it will be a little bit more contracted. We're gonna do some fire hydrants, we're gonna do some heel raises, and we're gonna do some real slow mountain climbers as I clock watch. Oh no, timer, you're terrible. All right, you ready? Go ahead, balance on that left knee, take a deep inhale, press into your hands, palms, and open that hip to the side for a fire hydrant. Only as much as you can without really tilting your body too much to the side. You got four more right here. Four, really find that squeeze. Two, now a nice heel to sky raise. So once again, working to keep those hips squared to the mat. So you're probably moving pretty slowly. I know I'm moving slowly as well. We're doing a total of eight of each move. So we got four more. Four, if you're moving at my pace, that is three, two, one. Now we're gonna get that mountain climber action. So knee to the elbow. A little rounding in that back, shortening the distance between the lower rib and the hip, getting into those abs. Four more. Four, three, two, one. Awesome. Let's get rid of this weight from behind our leg. We got one more challenge move right here. Go ahead, extend your right leg behind you. Flex those toes, so stretch through your heel, and then reach through your left hand fingertips. Make sure that you didn't get that arch in the back, so really draw that belly in. Find a nice flat back, stretch through your heel, and we're going to draw our left 
elbow back into a row and then forward. We got eight. Here's seven, six. Keep that elbow close by your side. Five. Press into that front hand palm. Four. Eyes are down on the floor. Three, two, one. Bring your left hand down. Go ahead, separate your knees. Send your hips back towards your heels. We'll walk your hands forward, relax for just a couple breaths in child's pose. And if it doesn't feel good for you to stretch your arms all the way forward, feel free to take a generous bend of your elbows. Slow down your exhale. Let's go ahead and walk those hands forward, get a nice little stretch through that belly, coming into Sphinx or some sort of version of Seal or Up Dog. Oh my gosh, nice little stretch through the low back as well, or keeping those forearms down on the ground, or opening your arms wider if that's still a little too intense for you. Take two more breaths in whichever one of these positions you chose. And then go ahead, bring your hands back in, tuck your toes under, send your hips up towards the ceiling. Take another moment in down dog, pedal through your heels as you start to walk them up closer towards your hands. And when you get to the top, inhale into a half lift. Exhale down into a forward fold. And then inhale slowly, gently rise yourself all the way up. Arms come up overhead, palms come together. Exhale, hands come down to heart center, namaskar, take a moment in your mountain. You're so strong. All we gotta do is the other side. Let's go for it. Inhale, arms up overhead, draw that belly in, exhale. Come on down to your forward fold. Inhale into a half lift, find that length, send your glutes to the back of the room and exhale down to your forward fold again. We're doing the same things, opposite leg. So plant your hands down on the floor, and this time go ahead, send your left leg back behind you. Sorry, bug, I just murdered during yoga. That's terrible. <laughs> plant the ball of the foot down, inhale, arms up overhead. Come into that crescent lunge. Really work to squeeze your back glute. Keep that bent in your front knee, shoulders released away from your ears. A big lift through the chest. Can you gently press through that back heel? Really feel some engagement of that back leg. Hips stay forward. Just a couple more breaths. We'll literally make it two. And then exhale, bring your hands down to the floor. You can bring them to the inside of the foot and walk that foot out. Bring your back knee down. Let's come on into our hip opener just like we did on the opposite side. Same pretty square in the first hip opener. My hands, palms are in line with my heel and I'm gently pressing the inner part of the knee towards the shoulder. Let's walk it back, come into our hamstring stretch. So remember, both sides of the body are different. What you do on one side, you do not have to do on the other. Find what feels right for the body today. Can you flex your toes back towards your face and get your calves involved in the party? Can you exhale and round yourself forward and bring your knee towards your nose? If it doesn't feel comfortable, don't do it. You can always stay lifted right here. Just taking a little hinge from your hips to get into your hamstring. All right, let's walk it forward once more. Got that deeper hip opener. The second time. Ooh, it feels so great. Hips are still square towards the mat, so you're doing your best not to open yourself up to the left side, even though it's a big open space. Let's walk our right foot all the way over to the left side of the mat, as many wiggles as you need to, and come on down into your pigeon. Remember, your heel can come really close to the center line of your body. It does not have to be parallel to your mat and you're working to keep your front bent knee glute off of the floor and bring that hip down towards the mat. If you wanna sleep it out, you can lower yourself down to your forearms if that feels good for you today. Again, just a couple breaths right here. All right. 
right, if you went for a nap, lift yourself back up. We're gonna come into that deer pose. You'll see it a little differently now that I'm twisted to this side. Remember, you're as 90-90, as feels good for your body today. The closer you bring your heel towards the glute, the more you're gonna feel it on the quad, and the further it is away, the more I feel it towards the back side of the body, but that's just how my body feels. So do what feels good for you. We're gonna take the twist towards our front leg, towards the right leg, yeah. Get that nice stretch through the back. Through the lower back, belly can come closer towards your thigh. And then next up, we got that pulse coming. Are you ready? So pull your core in, find a little bit more lifted length as you can. Oh, I'm ready. We're going for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Now we're gonna str stretch that leg out behind us and draw it through the sand as we come back to our beautiful fire log, stacking one leg on top of the other. If that's confusing, remember like you're hanging out, just talking to your friends with the outside of your ankle close to your knee. You sink your glute down, your legs start to stack. Make sure you're not jamming the ankle bone in. Maybe you even wiggle your hips back to get a little bit more of a, a parallel line in those legs. And if it feels good, if you need to get a little deeper into the hips, hinge forward. Otherwise, maybe hands behind you. We are so close to the end, y'all. Let's flip over and come into tabletop again so we can get some cat-cow. Honor what feels right. Find the stretch that works for you. And then get ready, because next up, we're gonna go for some of just those hip circles. No weight behind our leg to start with those hip circles. Go ahead, get your hands, palms down underneath of your shoulders, spread your fingers wide like a starfish. Make sure you're not arching or rounding your back, so draw that belly in, maybe a tuck of your pelvis. If you need to, core is engaged. Let's go for those circles. Doesn't matter what direction you start in. Remember, we're working to keep your hips down towards the mat. So not opening up towards the side as that knee lifts. It might limit your range of motion. Once you get four, find four in the opposite direction. All right, plant your leg back down on the floor. Grab your weight, and this time we're gonna put it behind the other knee. We got just eight of each move, and then we're gonna stretch it out. So hands, palms are still planted. Belly is in tight, length through the crown of your head. Looking down in front of your fingertips, there's no tuck of your chin, so there's no rounding through the neck, and there's no wrinkles in the neck. Draw your belly in, let's get those fire hydrants. Eight, seven, moving nice and slow. Six, belly pulled in, five, four, three, two, right into those heel raises, eight, seven, six, five, four, find that squeeze at the top, three, two, one, Mountain climbers, eight. Work to bring that knee towards your elbow. Six, the back's gonna round just a little bit. Four, three, two, one. Great work, get rid of that weight from behind your leg. Go ahead, open your knees just a little bit wider. Send your hips back towards your heels. One more time, hanging out in this child's pose. We're gonna add a shoulder stretch into the child's pose because I know that being in tabletop and some of the planks can be challenging. So go ahead, take that right arm and let's weave it underneath the left side of the body for a little thread the needle child's pose.
On your next inhale, we're going to gently unthread one side and then thread through to the other. Just keep breathing. Awesome. Stretch both hands forward. Pull your body forward one more time. Let's get that big stretch through our lower back, through our belly, into our chest. Even in your throat, stretch your eyes, nose, chin up towards the ceiling. Then go ahead, tuck your toes under, send your hips up. Walk your hands to your feet or your feet towards your hands, whichever feels best for you to take. Take a generous bend in your knees, transfer your hands to your thighs, drop one shoulder forward. Oh, hips towards the back of the room, drop the other shoulder forward. Give yourself one cow and then cat yourself all the way up at the top. Take a deep inhale, bring your arms up overhead. And as you exhale, find whatever reach to the side feels good for you. Oh, press through those hands, palms. Relax your arms all the way down to your side. Heel toe your feet back together. Take a moment in your stillness before you reach for your water, before you do anything else to just bring a smile to your face and know that you made it. We did it, everybody. Thank you so much for coming to today's core and stretch. I'm a little sweaty. I hope you are too. If you have any questions or concerns about anything that I said or did, please reach out. Can't wait to see you all again soon. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.